Hello dear friends, welcome to Shiksha Mantra and we are here again with another discussion about indefinite pronouns. But this time it's a very critical one which need the support of tricks for you to manage all these grammatical critical things. But it's very easy. Don't think that it's very tough. So what is this? As you can see here, it's about subject verb agreement that's associated with indefinite pronouns. Yes, dear friends, sometimes to agree the verb with the indefinite pronouns which come as subject is much confusing. And uh, as you know, indefinite pronoun is really a very tricky thing. That's why we are discussing so much about indefinite pronouns we have already had some discussion regarding indefinite pronouns if you don't have checked them you'd get the link in the i button above as well as in the end screen so there we have an entire playlist about indefinite pronouns so we are much serious about it but how serious are you now the question is why indefinite pronouns require such seriousness so when we use an indefinite pronoun as the subject the same indefinite pronouns can be used either as singular or as plural so they can take both the singular form and the plural form so for the same indefinite pronouns sometimes you have to agree a singular verb and sometimes a plural verb so why it happens let's add something more with this the confusion comes because of collective pronouns yes dear friends there's the idea of collective pronouns which gets associated with this so the same pronoun sometimes singular sometimes plural and it adds to our confusion but how the question is how it happens so let's check how it happens here we have an example and with this example we we'll try to figure out what the problem actually is some of the cake is burned some of the cake is burned so here some this is an indefinite pronoun and it's accepting a singular verb and in the next sentence some of the cans are expired here also the same indefinite pronoun some but it's accepting a plural verb so some of the cake is burned some of the cans are expired now you say sir it's very simple when it's a written cake would use singular when it cans that is plural we'd use plural obviously you are pretty right so here cake is singular that's why sham is referring as being singular this is the most important factor because sometimes it may happen that you won't get this singular or plural form like this. So sometimes it may happen that you won't get this expression. You'd have to do this without this expression that is off the cake. Sometimes you won't get this. So what would happen if off cake is not there? Some is burned and then uh, just uh, strike it out. Consider it's not here. And uh, some are expired. Now, how will you get some is burned, some are expired? So, this is the problem. Most of the time, we produce sentences like this without that of reference. So there you'd get confused. It's because some refers to cake and some here refers to cans. So that's how it creates confusion. So here we we'll try to figure out 
how to get rid of all these confusions here in this particular discussion. So before we get confused, just learn the facts first. Don't take it very seriously. Don't think it's very, very critical. It's very uh, difficult things. Rather, it's very simple. First, find out what are those very, very important such pronouns, such indefinite pronouns, which we use as what? Which we use as singular indefinite pronouns. So, how to find uh, them out? There also we have a very easy trick. And what's that trick? It's very simple. So, when some uh, singular indefinite pronouns, they include the compounds like body, one, thing. Just check it. No body, every one, some, thing. Have you got it? Body, one, thing. So, when we get such things, these are obviously singular. So, nobody likes liver for supper. Everyone sings in the shower. Something smells funny. So, all these are singularly treated. That's for sure. Okay? So, you have to remember these expressions. Body, one thing. When these compounds are included. Second. When one, another, each, either, neither, and much. Such pronouns would be there. Obviously, they would accept singular verbs. Like one of the keys. Don't confuse. Don't get confused with keys. Each of the members. Don't get confused with members. Your focus should be on one, each, etc. Okay, now. Most of the time, tumhe aisa hi kuch galti ho jate hai. Kyunki waha pe S dek liya keys, plural. Isi liye, you make it do. Does nahi, do ho ga. Aisa, aisa kabhi kabhi a jata hai dimaag mein. Lekin tumhe just ye apne memory mein lana ho ga. Kya? Kyunki yaha one. This is singular. Each, this is singular. Either, this is singular. So, the pronoun, the indefinite pronoun is in focus and not the nouns that it refers to. Got it? So, here also we use singular verbs. It's very simple. And then, there are some others which are always plural or sometimes plural, sometimes singular. How? You'd learn them step by step. So, when we'd consider them as plural verbs, just uh, take it uh, very simply and uh, obviously you are going to find it to be very, very essential for your learning because uh, it's, it's really fantastic, these rules. So, plural indefinite pronouns. How? When a plural verb is used with pronouns. So, what are the pronouns? The pronouns are both few, many and several. They are always plural. Whenever you get both few, many and several, they are always plural. There is no confusion about it. Why? Both of them play the flute very well. Both means obviously one plus one. So two is involved here. That's why it's plural. So here we'd have to use a plural verb. Well, few read this well. Few, that means more than one. So here obviously we are considering more than one. That's why read the verb, plural form. Many of our young people, many, several of the neighborhood. Lawns need to be mowed. Several of the neighborhood lawns. It's plural. Several. Several also means more than one. 
So as these four expressions, both few, many and several, you may have a pen and paper with you and jot them down, just write them down and remember. Note is very essential here. You have to take a note of all these rules. Okay, I'm going to the trick. So this is how we'd find that all these plural indefinite pronouns, they are here and they are always used in plural form. So after this, uh, we'd shift to our next uh, part. It's also very much, very much essential. Why it's essential? Because there are some pronouns that can be used either as singular or plural. Yes, dear friends, that's the confusion I'm talking about. That's why indefinite pronoun gets so much of uh, tricky things when they arrive as the subject in a sentence. So pronouns, particular pronouns like uh, that we have here, all, more, none, and some. The confusion are found here, but how? All has spilled on the table. Look, all were sold last week. So all has and all were. Here the indefinite pronoun is just the same, all. So what happens? For the same indefinite pronouns, once we are treating it as singular and then we are treating it as plural. But why? Why should we take sometimes it's as plural and sometimes as singular? Here's the confusion. The confusion won't stay long if you stay with us and if you learn it uh, very seriously. See, if I say all of the milk has spilled on the table, all of the milk has spilled on the table, then the milk, it's referring all. So we may say that here all is equal to the milk. So it's singular and at the same time, it's non-count noun. Yes, dear friends, it's a very, very important expressions that you have to remember. It's a non-count noun. So it's singular. So here all as a pronoun, it has the antecedent noun, the milk. It is singular. That's why all is also treated singularly. And what happens for the second? If I replace this all of the books. Now what happens? All of the books were sold last week. So all of the books. Here, all, it's referring to the books. So here, if we write it down, we would say all is equal to the books. And here, the antecedent noun is plural. It's countable noun. So here, a plural verb has been used. So this is how you have to consider. If there's any problem regarding how I'm considering it, you may write it down in the comment section. It's very serious. And I'll try my best to explain it with more videos, with more examples, if it uh, actually demands. But I would say you just don't need uh, to uh, make any effort to learn it more because it's very simple. Once you complete these tricks, you would find that it's very, very simple things. It is very simple to remember. So, you have to consider all of the milk and all of the books. So, this antecedent noun must be considered because this is the noun for which this indefinite pronoun is used. Okay. So, here we have reached our almost uh, the most important thing that we would learn here. And why I'm saying that it's important because the tricks that we are going to use here the trick is very important otherwise it will get caught in the confusion of singularity and plural 
whether it's singular or plural confusion is sure to be there so when indefinite pronouns that uh, actually swings from singular to plural depending on the circumstances you can perform one of these following tests so i am providing you some tests you may use them and you would find that this swinging is not confusing at all so what are the tastes we are going to have here let's uh, check it one after another okay so first uh, we would uh, try to find out the first trick so what's the first trick the first trick says identify the antecedent of the indefinite pronoun yes dear friends all i have told you now all of the books i have identified the antecedent pronoun all of the books so the antecedent pronoun was plural that's why i have used a plural verb so identifying the antecedent is very very important okay because that antecedent produces the indefinite pronoun but how would you identify it so the first check the first consideration is is it a count noun or a non-count noun yes dear friends here i have also told you milk that's non-count noun so if it's non-count noun there's no confusion it's going to be singular just like this most of the hair is lost look most of the hair here non-count noun uncountable so it's always singular so here the indefinite pronoun would attract a singular verb and for the second when it's count noun the confusion comes here when it's count noun it has two possibilities it can be singular as well as plural so how to find them out again you have to take shelter to the antecedent how more of the product is found online more of the product look it's singular the antecedent is singular so more it attracts a singular verb is and in the second sentence more of the baskets arrive at the store look baskets it's plural so it's attracted plural verb arrive and it may happen that in some sentences you won't get that of the product or of the baskets so how would you find it out when you won't get that support in the sentence you are using the indefinite pronoun only without its antecedent so when it's indefinite pronoun it's it's very simple we we'll try to understand it we we'll try to find it out uh, with the help of some uh, with help of some uh, example uh, i think that would be better okay so if we take some example we would very easily understand uh, there would be there won't be any any uh, confusion just uh, just just have a very detailed understanding of this trick this is the most important one so whenever you are caught in confusion like this all has or have been done as requested all has or have been done as requested so here both are correct as and have both can be used here but how would you find out first you'd have to find out all this indefinite pronoun what is its antecedent which noun it's replacing obviously you'd get that reference of the antecedent noun in previous sentences so if the previous sentence you focus you'd have to ask this indefinite pronoun with of just put a prepositional phrase of and you would get the answer so it would be all of dash now you'd have to fill this from where from the previous reference from the antecedent noun that's used for all 
So what's the antecedent noun that has been used for all that to tell you the answer? So it's it's very simple. You have to find it out. So if I say all of the work. So in the previous sentence, there is the work has been attributed to them. And a request was sent. The work has been attributed to them with a request that has been sent to them as well. Now you have got all of what? All of the work. So the work, it's singular. So here our choice would be has. Okay. It's, it's very simple. Just ask all of what and you'd get the antecedent noun and if the antecedent noun is singular all of what if the antecedent noun is singular that means what gives us a re result a noun that is singular we we'll use singular verb and if it's plural we we'll use plural verb how all the tasks all of what if i replace the work with the tasks so what would happen all of the tasks have been done as requested and this is why i have used i have to uh, go to the previous uh, boards from where uh, probably you'd find out what uh, i am uh, saying here just have a look at this all of the cake, some of the cake, some of what, some of the cake, some of what, the cans, plural, so it's plural. And we have found the same thing there as well in this particular trick. So whenever you want to get that antecedent noun in the sentence like this, all has been or all have been done as requested. You want to get that antecedent noun present only the indefinite pronoun you have to seek for it with all of what with a propositional phrase with of and a question if the answer or the antecedent noun is singular the verb would be singular if it's plural the verb would be plural that's the trick that's a th these are actually the very simple tricks with which you can explore it okay so we must uh, take it to a final judgment. And what's that final judgment? None of the juice is left for children. Look, none of the juice. Okay. So again, what we have done, we have found out of what the juice. It's singular. So the verb is also singular. Why? Because none refers to juice and is singular. And in the next sentence, none of the sorts are expensive. The same none, but it's plural. Why? Because none of what? None of the sorts. It's plural. So the verb is plural. So this is how by using these very simple tricks, we can easily agree the verb with the indefinite subject without making any mistake and flourish in our skill of english grammar and obviously for this you'd have to stay with shiksha mantra by subscribing our channel and obviously by pressing the bell notifications hard so that you can get every every notifications from our end we are returning very soon with another discussion on indefinite pronoun because it's very tricky till then bye bye happy learning